Roswell Flight Test Crew, back at CES 2017, and I'm talking to Matt over at the Panasonic booth. And of course, Panasonic doesn't make drones, that they've told us, but they do make a camera, the GH4, which has been flown for several years now, and you've got some big news here at the show. Yeah, we're going to keep the GH4 for a while. That's the, I'm joking. We're oh. actually, we are going to keep the GH4 in the line, but we're, we've actually launched the GH5 at the show. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about the camera just generally? Generally, what you're getting with the GH5 is a camera that now has a 20 megapixel sensor, and we've removed what's called the anti-aliasing filter. That's a really nerdy way of saying it's going to be sharper. The GH4 had a crop on its sensor because it would shoot 4K, and that meant it had to crop in a little bit. The GH5 won't do that anymore. It's going to use the full width of the sensor, so your wide-angle lenses will be a little wider on the GH5 than they were on the GH4. Obviously very useful for drone operators. The big news, though, is that the camera will now add a 60p 4K mode. I know a lot of drone operators struggle a bit when they're shooting 24 or 30 because of movement, and it, it takes a really skilled operator to be able to move their drone and simultaneously tilt the camera to get rid of any of that subject blurring in the foreground. So. Having that 60p 4K is going to be a big benefit to users. We've also added for 1080, 180 frame per second mode as well. So slow mos will look even slow moier, uh, as I like to say. So they should get very good results with the camera for those things. I think one of the big things too is if you're doing static shots or landed shots where you're trying to do establishing or things that are moving forward or backward, we're doing 10-bit video internally now, but only at 30 frame or less. So you have 10-bit, 422 color, so if you're dealing with shots where you know you're going to have a sunrise or a sunset and you're worried about solarizing or what we call banding that can happen, you can go ahead and record internally in 10-bit. You don't need to use an external recorder anymore and you're going to get really nice looking results, especially if you plan on color correcting or grading your footage in post. Okay, so one question being forced on me by our camera operator is they want to know about the dynamic range and the clipping on this camera. And first of all, what is that? And second, how does the GH5 do on that? Okay, well, dynamic range really, the easiest way to think of it is the how many shades of gray I can get between the darkest part of the image and the whitest part of the image. Clipping is where we start to lose detail either in the whites or in the blacks. So the camera base dynamic range is right around 10 stops. What makes this a great camera though is we can add something called Vlog L. It'll cost you $100. It's an it's a unlock code that you add to the camera. That's going to give you what's called a logarithmic gamma, which is a very flat profile. Um, we don't add any clipping of the black area, and we don't roll off or knee the highlight area. It's a logarithmic profile. When you shoot that, you're going to get 12 stops of dynamic range out of the camera, which is probably the best way for your shooters to shoot. But it causes a problem for camera operators, too, because it looks so flat that it's hard to see what's in focus. Focus peaking doesn't work particularly well. So we have what's called LUTs built into the camera. A LUT is a lookup table. It color corrects and adds the knee and toe that you'll need and maintains the dynamic range you're gonna expect once you post correct it. So we have a LUT built in for preview, but you can also load your own LUTs. So if you have somebody on set who's a colorist that's gonna actually set up a LUT for you, you can put it in there so you can get a preview of what the exact footage will look like. Fantastic, sounds very useful. Yeah, it's very lut delicious. We were really excited for it. You're having too much fun over there. Yes, we're a little punch drunk here at this show. <laughs> Any other features that would be of particularly keen interest to the drone operators? The camera will also have a five-axis in-body image stabilization system. So if you're on, obviously you're going to run a gimbal on a camera like this, but you can still get some micro shake that can occur. The sensor is moving at five different axes, and it'll also work with some of our in-lens stabilizers together. So you get a dual IS system. If you're a lower budget drone operator where this is going to be your only camera, sometimes once you pull your camera off of your, off of your drone, you end up having to rebalance your, your gimbal just to be able to do your handhelds. A lot of times you're going to be able to get away with just hand holding this without having to use a gimbal. So you can just pull it off your gimbal, you can go ahead and do your handhelds, you don't have to unmount your Ronin or what you're using. What's it going to cost and when's it going to be available? So the camera will sell for roughly $2,000, a, a penny less than $2,000. <laughs> um, if it's not shipping by April, we're going to be pretty disappointed. So it should be the end of March. All right. Well, Matt, thank you so much. And from CES 2017, this is the Roswell Flight Test Crew signing off. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.